Let's go YouTube. What's good YouTube? It's that Fantasy Network and I'm your host that Fantasy Guy. We back with another video and this video this time I decided to do something different. You know me, I'm 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 something like the prospect whisperer. I, I like I like to study prospects. But but today we will talk about dynasty leagues. I know I probably got more so of a redraft audience, but today we're talking dynasty. But to be honest with you, you can apply this to redraft because what gave me the idea is me currently drafting in a best ball league. Now, this guy, you know who you are, hustler, fantasy hustler. I'm in a I'm in a best ball league with this guy, and I'm looking at the settings, and I'm like, this guy really making quarterbacking a priority. You know, it's it's like six points per touchdown, but a negative four points for interceptions. What kind of bullshit? <laughs> what, what kind of bullshit is this negative four like they got leaves that give you four points for touchdown but he's doing negative four for interceptions so like someone like brady is you know very important someone that's efficient that don't turn over the ball that's in a high power offense like tom brady is very important in this league which gets me to the point you have to find the edge so you need to study your scoring settings. If you know the group, that would be even better. Like if you knew the group of people you drafting with and you know what they like, then you have to try to find an edge. And so the example I'm going to give is in a dynasty league I was in. I'm still in this dynasty league, but I'm going to bring it up. What happened last year in this dynasty league? So in this dynasty league, it's a, one of those safe leagues. You know, the many leagues that Scott Fish and Ryan McDowell have. You know, uh, I think both of the partners and the, the many safe leagues is out there. It's a big business for them, to, you know. But it's the easy way to find a dynasty league if you want to jump in one. The only thing I don't like about the league is it's got a big rake with it because, you know, you have to pay a deposit, which is, I'm like, is this really a deposit? It's really, it's really me just giving you money for you, for, for you to keep me from leaving. So if, if, if the buy-in is a hundred, the deposit is a hundred. And if you want to leave the league, you don't get the hundred back. If somebody coming to the league, guess what? They got to pay the same deposit and still pay the buy-in. So where's that deposit going into do pocket. But I digress. I digress. That's another topic. <laughs> but this safe league is a ultra flex league. So it's one of them leagues you can put it only allows you to put two quarterbacks, but for any other position you can put whatever. You know, and of course this is the normal dynasty league, so it only give you the option of quarterback, running back, wide receiver and tight end so no kickers in defense or idp players so and all and all the safe league are pretty much the same ppr full point ppr but there is tight end premium two point tight end premium and thus is the edge so this is what i did since i'm used to playing in these safe leagues unfortunately I don't think none of the guys that jumped in the league with me are novices of any means. But I don't think they understood the edge you can get on getting tight ends. I had one one of the guys in there decided to draft just a bunch of running backs. He had James Conner. You know James Conner was on it. Derrick Henry. And James Derrick Henry was on it before he got injured. Elvin Kamara. Christian McCaffrey, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, 
McLaurin, Antonio Brown. So to be honest with you, because this guy ended up getting third place, if he he wouldn't have so many mishaps, it's a chance he would have won the league. If I if I, I want to be honest with myself, because McCaffrey went down, Henry went down, Antonio Brown put himself down. You got three heavy hitters from the starters that wasn't able to compete with me when he met me in the playoffs. Who knows? He would have had a chance to win, but I beat him by 70 points. It was 191 to 121, so I don't know if them guys would have filled that gap or not. And as I was saying, it wasn't no novices in this group. Might even be a couple people you know, because the FF engineer, I run into him a lot. He does a lot of things in the community. Rich Rebar, of course, anybody, you know, I hear him name all the time. I don't know what he does, but I hear his name all the time. <laughs> like, he's well-known in the community, and I don't even know what he, I don't know what he, who he worked for or what. I guess, I guess I should research that. I hear this man's name all the time. Ryan McDowell, and I know that at least they got one other guy that plays a lot of high stakes. You know, I don't think he's well known in the community, but he has a star by his name. When they put a star by your name, I mean, you earn a, a nice amount of money and save league. And I don't even have a star by my name. So he must be doing better than me. So for quarterbacks, I'm going to be honest, a younger me probably would have did the techniques of getting a bunch of running backs. Because this was an auction draft. So that's the beauty. I love auction draft. You're able to construct the team exactly how you want to. And a younger me would have did running backs. But an older me that knows this game, knows this dynasty game, knows this dynasty game a little better, I'm not going to throw a bunch of running backs that have a short shelf life on my squad. You know, unless I was just trying to win now get out the league in a couple years. Like, if I'm just trying to win now, maybe get a couple championships in a few years, That that's the way you go because your team is going to get old real quick. Instead, I thought the edge would be going tight end because I know how much the tight ends will score if you get the elite ones. So I tried to, I tried to hit as many elite tight ends that I can get. I didn't I, I didn't do well when it comes to quarterback. I only did I only drafted two quarterbacks, which could be a problem real soon. Like it, it I was I was already in a fright. I drafted Jalen Hurts and Tom Brady. Jalen Hurts was on a hot seat and Tom Brady just retired. And I was praying that he came back. And damn God he came back. Appreciate you, Tom Brady. Give me a hand clap for that. Hand clap. <laughs> I appreciate you coming back. I needed that. So guess what? We going on another run. I did have a couple decent running backs. Fournette, who had a good year. And Damon Harris, who had a good year. My wide receivers was trash. I had A.J. Brown. I had Hunter Renfro. I traded for Cardell Patterson because he was putting up so many points. And I needed that since I was going in on this championship this year. I needed that. But my heavy hitters, my heavy hitters was Darren Wilder, who sold me out last year. I drafted Robert Tunyon. He got hurt. I drafted Logan Thomas. He did nothing. I drafted Kyle Pitts. Yeah, yeah. I drafted Foster Moreau. He gave me a couple weeks when Wilder was out. I drafted Travis Kelsey. I drafted Mark Andrews. So I had three of the best tight ends in the game. Three of the best tight ends in the game. And I ended up having four players that scored four players in the top 14 players that scored the most points in this league. Tom Brady was at number three. Mark Andrews at number five. 
only three quarterbacks was in front of him and Cooper Cup. I mean, that's how many points he scored. Kelsey at 11th and Jalen Hurts at 14. So I hit. I, I had four net score the 30th most points in the league. So I, I hit. This league is start 10. And I had 10 players giving me at least 15 points. Well, Pitts was at 14.9, so I just run it up to 15. I had 10 players giving me 15 points. Over 15 points. Tom Brady, 25. Andrews, 23.9, so 24 points a game. Kelsey, 22. Jalen Hurts, 21. Fournette, 18. Waller averaged 18. And you know Waller had a down year. And he averaged 18 points still. Hunter Renfro, 15. Pitts, 15. Cordell, 15. So you have to be able to find the edge in your league. Because with that, I was able to win a championship. I have another league, a safe league, where they allow you. It's, it's more of a traditional setup. But I only have to start two wide receivers, and I can start like five running backs, and my running backs is damn good. So I did not win the championship in that league. I ran through the regular season. I lost one game. I was so pissed I didn't go undefeated. I lost one game, and and then I got into the playoffs and got beat. But <laughs> that's the thing about having a running back heavy team. They will get injured. <laughs> you will lose people. Is what it is. You know, if you're looking for more variance, like running back, you get stability. You get stable production. What well, with wide receivers, you get that variance. And you can go in the playoffs with that stable production, and you can catch teams, you know, because you guarantee this amount of points, and you can steamroll teams, but then you can meet that one team that that have wide receivers hit that day, and they might have some low end running backs that decide to show up and give them normal production, and then you fucked. <laughs> like your, your quarter, your running back is giving you 20 points a game. Yo, you got five running backs giving you 20 points a game. Also, you know, this wide receiver come in, put up, 30. This wide receiver put up 35. This running back on, he gave you two running backs to put up 15, and you you had a disadvantage just that fast. It just is what it is. You know. That's why I stopped talking trash about fantasy. Like when my trash talking is that I am able to play in a number of leagues and be successful as far as having a winning record getting in the top three places to be able to get the money is not like, ah, I'm going to beat you. How, how can I, how can I bet on someone else? Like <laughs> I can only put my skill together to try to put talent on my roster, but I can't tell you that someone's going to get pissed off in the middle of the game, take off their fucking shirt and leave the stadium. I never had a mental health diagnosis. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never had an issue or problem. I don't take pills. I just got a high IQ. I can't predict that. I can't predict injuries. It's a lot of stuff I can't predict. You can only put the talent on your team. You can't predict what people are going to do. So, you know, when I have people like my homeboy Perkins, anybody that follows this channel, you know who he is. Cause he, 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 on a, he on the homeboy show, you know, the homeboy's fantasy show. When you have someone like that talking trash to me, I'm just like, why are you talking? Like you don't even you don't even make the playoffs. Like you you talk trash to me and you don't make the playoffs. I I know you you throw in my face that I, I haven't won the championship yet in a home league, but you 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 not you don't even have a chance. You never you never even make the dance. I'm making a dance each year. You 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 not they even get a chance. But going off topic. <laughs> but you have a lot of these 
I just jumped in random people leagues. Like I like to compete. So I was just jump in a league with people I don't know that probably been in the league for years. I'm like, what up? I want some. Like I want all the smoke. Like that's just me. And I might come in last place. Cause I'm not used to the league. And you got some people that don't want to trade with me. You got a lot of people that want to beat me. Like I jumped in two home leagues and I came in the bottom of the league. And when I look back, it's like I had one of the most points scored on me in both leagues. I don't know what was going on. It's like the team, I don't know if they the managers decided to show up that day or their teams just just gave me an ass beating because I was on the end of it. Like both of them leagues, I had the highest point scored on me. And if you if you not reciprocant putting out them points, you're not going to win in redraft. Like, that's over. You're not going to win in fantasy. You're going to take that L. You know, sometimes you're the nail, sometimes you're the hammer. And I was the nail that day, that 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 year. So, I'll bounce back, though. But when you jump in these leagues, they have a lot of fickle, I would say fickle scoring. And you just got to figure out By looking at the looking at the settings, what what edge can you find? Some leagues have these crazy bonuses. It's hard to figure that out. But if you do research, you can find out who had the most breakaway, who had the most yak. You know, blah blah. blah. You, you just you just got to figure it out to find the edge. If you if you know your league. As long as it's not a per, point per carry, you know, as long as it's not a point per carry, you know your league like to go running backs while they zigging, you can zag and go wide receivers. Let let them grab their running backs. Let them fight over the running back first couple of rounds while you grab top tier receivers. You know, you just, you got to find the edge. edge. If it's only, if it's Four points for touchdowns for quarterbacks. It shouldn't be a priority to get a quarterback if they don't have any bonuses or anything like that. Like, then you definitely go on late round quarterback. But in a league like I was discussing it with the best ball league, six points for touchdown, but a negative four for interception. Now you have to make quarterback a priority and try to get an efficient quarterback. Like, Someone like Hurts might be beat by someone like Cousins. Like you know, this this is totally different type of league. You you can get the wrong quarterback and end up with negative points. But I think you guys get the point. I think I've been on here long enough. Peace. And remember, there's no off season for champions. <laughs>